It looks like a sneaky little move is causing huge troubles to the E6 Sicilian players such as Taimanov players, Paulsen players and D4 Knight players. This being said, let's just look at the game Jakub Siemen, the current U16 World Chess Championship against Grandmaster Raunak Sandvani. So E4, C5, Knight F3 and now E6 is set, D4, C takes D4 and then we arrive in this position. And in the last video we looked at this move, knight to f6, d4 knights, and here white had a beautiful game where he played a3 and completely outplayed black. But let's go back to our game. This game was played during the World Rapid Championship, and here Raunak Sandavi decided to play the Taimanov with queen to c7, and still white goes for a3, a sneaky little move with some ideas. Black plays the very standard move, a6, white continues with bishop e3. There are other moves here, but this bishop e3 looks like a real threat, at least if you look at very recent games. Now black has a choice. Black can choose between different setups. For example, knight f6, f4, d6 and queen f3, and this is a normal position, or at least normal looking. This a3 might look strange, but actually white might be a little bit better here. So let's go back and see what was played in the game. In the game d6 was played immediately, then followed f4, and now again black has a choice. But he played b5. There are other moves like knight to f6 or bishop e7 without playing b5. However, black decided to do this, so let's take a look at the game. Now it is important to know that after a move like queen to f3, the move knight takes d4 is good and should be considered by white as an option for black because now this knight is going to jump to c6. Might be a little bit unpleasant for white, but still white has a nice position. Let's say knight e7, and now it is important not to castle queenside, because then really knight c6 is annoying, but to stay with the king in the center for the moment and play a move like queen to g3, then knight c6, bishop f2 or bishop e3 as you wish and white might have a slight edge let's say g6 bishop d3 this is the square where the bishop belongs to and now we see the use of this a3 move there is no knight to b4 move yet or at least if b4 was played then the pawn would take and taking with the knight doesn't really work because of bishop to d4 so direct approaches do not work here and black must play slower otherwise he will be crushed but let's go back in the game after b5 white seemed to be prepared or saw that taking on d4 might be an idea so he took on c6 himself. So first he exchanges the knights himself. The queen is put on c6 and now there is no knight coming to c6, at least not in two moves. So this might be an advantage. Speaking for this variation, that the knight is not coming to c6 so fast. Now white continues with the normal Taimanov or Paulsen moves, queen to f3, and black continues with the same things, knight to f6, now queenside castle, by white, rook to b8, preparing pawn pushes, and it's up to black how he's going to proceed on the queenside. Now white just tries to steamroll black on the king side, g4, a very aggressive move but very typical in the Sicilian as you might know. 
So now a5 and white continues with g5. The knight goes to d7, knight to e2, bishop to b7, knight e2, a very prophylactic move because b4 was coming and it's better to have the knight on e2 and not be forced into some annoying variations. Now, as you can see, this e4 pawn is weak because the knight moved away. However, it is black who should watch out for threats because after a move like rook to g1, queen takes e4, there is this very strong queen h3. And now black should play very precisely because after moves like, let's say, rook to c8, there is a very annoying detail here. After knight to d4, the position of black isn't so good. Black is a pawn up, but the position is already very bad. Let's say queen to d5, and then just bishop to g2. And this bishop here has a hard time. The queen will come in, but this is not enough compensation. So black must know what he is doing. But in the game, white played an immediate knight to d4, so not playing rook to g1, but just going into this queenless middle game where white is a pawn down. So rook to g1 still has to be played. And now b4 follows a very strong move, trying to open up the queen side. And of course, the thing is that black wants to achieve his goal and white doesn't want black to achieve the goal, which is very obvious. So therefore the move that should be played here is the move of well, played in the game, a4. And now followed a little bit an unprecise move. The best he had probably been g6 first and after a move like bishop to b5 h6 and the idea here is that after h4 and the exchange on the g file let's say rook c8 attacking this pawn the second time so it needs to be defended and now the very strong rook to h3 now the rook is in the game it moved once and is attacking a piece immediately this doesn't look too pleasant for white and let's just remember that white is actually a pawn down so not very pleasant as mentioned and not a position you want to play with the white pieces in the game bishop to e7 was played and despite being a pawn up it's not so clear who is better here so the engine says it's equal but it's very difficult to play for the black side because after move like bishop b5 which was played in the game black is really struggling with good moves here let's say rook to c eight again and then rook to d2 was played rook c7 and now very simple but successful knight to b3 and now this pawn on a5 seems to be weak so what should black do here and it's not easy to play this position, in my opinion. Maybe you have a different opinion. And just let me know in the comment section if you have a different opinion and what it is. Because I believe the a5 pawn is just weak and the a4 pawn might be dangerous at some point. So black might play a move like uh, d5. And of course, uh, taking here immediately is good it's winning a pawn this is obvious but there is even a stronger move or maybe a little bit better bishop to b6 then the rook has to move let's say rook to b7 and then you just pick up the pawn with the bishop not with the knight because the bishop here is more active than on e3 while the knight on a5 might not be the most active piece. 
But in the game something different happened. After knight to b3, white was faced with black's very dubious move here, castling. And this is already a blunder. Now I will give you a few seconds to think about this position. Tell me what you would play here. Now let's continue. Of course, you might have seen that the coordination here of the rook defending the knight on d7 and the bishop on e4 is a little bit too bad. And it's very obvious because after the exchange on the d file, which the black player most likely hadn't seen, rook takes d7 and now simply knight to c5. And it's not clear what black should play here. Black tried to play on with bishop to c6. Knight takes d7, bishop takes d7, and the point is that the center is rather closed yet for the black side, so black has two pawns here. But white is free to maneuver, and it, black doesn't really have realistic chances to hold, defend this position. So bishop c5 was played, and as you can see, this is very unpleasant. Bishop uh, Rook to c8, bishop takes d6 is the obvious move bishop takes d6 rook takes d6 and just stay because black is going to finish the game in a, a white is going to finish the game in a very nice way bishop takes a4 rook g2 g6 rook g to d2 c5 rook c5 now check king to g7 rook a8 and here black resigned but why? Let's take a look at the random move like h6, then h4 in order to defend the pawn. And whatever black does here, you just take back on g5. And the next move is simply rook d to d8. And then this check is very unpleasant. Let's say this move, then this, and there is this idea of checkmate, as you can see. So the f pawn must be moved, but then black is completely lost. White can even try to exchange the rooks here, and black doesn't really have a good response because after moves like rook to b7, you just grab this pawn and black loses further material, the pawn structure is completely ruined, there is no hope for black at all. A very beautiful game, and if you like this game, there is another game which we have covered with this very same idea of playing a3 but against the four knights, which you can see here. So see you in the next video.